Hi, I've got a question for you and some surprisingly good answers. How close are we to a workable quantum computer? Now, quantum computing has always been about five years away, according to all the great predictions that technology magazines like to produce. However, recent events from companies like Microsoft and Google give us a very concrete picture that they believe that this is closer than you might think. So first of all, let's take a look at a GitHub repository to find the evidence for why I would say that we're close. So this is Microsoft's repository for their encryption software that is used in their operating system, Windows. So SimCrypt. So what is in this GitHub repository that would lead us to believe that Microsoft thinks that quantum computing in reality is very close? Let's take a look at an update. All right, here we are at the uh, GitHub repository. And let's take a look at some of the things that are going on here. This is a big library and it does all kinds of different things. But right here is a key word that would uh, grab your attention if you're aware. So this comment says implementing uh, MLKEM. -E and so let's look inside here and see what's going on. It doesn't really say right out here that we believe that quantum computing is going to be developed tomorrow. Therefore, we are getting ready today. But if you read between the lines, that's what it means. So how long would it take for Microsoft to redesign all of their cryptography routines in Windows, in their browser, in their cloud, and make sure that all business units are agreeing that these systems are going to be the new way to do encryption? Well, in 2018, one of the senior researchers at uh, Microsoft said, I think we should start. Uh, the great news is that there are crypto systems that aren't able to be attacked by a quantum computer. And this is something Microsoft Research is also doing. Uh, we have a whole team here looking at what are those protocols that are going to be robust against quantum attacks, against quantum computers breaking them. And these are classical systems, classical systems that can easily and readily replace things like RSA. And of course, it will take, you know, maybe a decade to switch over the software all the calls to RSA in our present software. Right. But if we start today, we will be uh, you know, fundamentally ready. So when a quantum computer of the size required to break RSA exists, we won't be using it to break RSA. We're going to be using it to solve you know, these amazing problems we have. So let's take a look at Google. So Google here, it says in the headline, Google Chrome switches to MLKEM for post-quantum cryptography defense. So both Microsoft and Google are on literally on the same page when they're speaking about how they're going to encrypt data. The industry feels that cryptography is under threat. We're going to change, and it's changed then sooner than later. So take a look here at this list of uh, dizzying numbers. These are huge numbers. Uh, they come from an output from a program that I, I wrote for my students in an uh, information security class where I teach schools. And uh, you can see that this first number here is, in, is immense. It's got hundreds of digits. I wouldn't even know how to pronounce the name. And the second one, labeled as a Q, is also very large. Now, these are factors of a number. So two prime numbers multiplied together to get a third number. So multiplying numbers is pretty easy for computers to get to. But trying to guess the factors of this big, fat, hairy green number how would you ever figure that out? Well, computers are fast, but not fast enough to tell me what the two factors are unless they can take decades or even centuries of guessing and checking before they can come up with the answer. And so factoring two large numbers is the essential security of an RSA security system. So who has purchased um, quantum computing machines and who is working on it? Well, pretty much everybody that's into technology. So look at this list, mostly American technology companies, but you can see that there's a few Chinese companies. And so the race to get there is fierce. Whoever has a quantum computing uh, device is going to be like, um, almost like in the first round of a, a new secret weapon. We'll be able to decrypt other people's messages and see what they've been saying. So we will have no security on any of our encrypted communications of today. So what are hackers doing? Well, they know also that uh, these encryption models are about ready to die. And so when the first practical quantum computer is put into production, we'll be able to decrypt all of the current communication that's going on right now. And so what we call that is harvest now and decrypt later. So that is why Microsoft decided 
It's time to change our encryption algorithms because if people are collecting data now that is being transmitted across the internet or being stored somewhere, and uh, maybe five years from now, we'll be able to unencrypt all of it, then of course that will be a security problem. So hackers are planning ahead as well as Microsoft and Google. So this tells us that cryptography is getting close to uh, extinction in its present form. So that's why they're doing the upgrades. Now here's what Microsoft says is going to be the first practical supercomputer when it comes to uh, cryptography and to quantum computing. So they say, we need to have um, a million stable qubits that can perform one quintillion operations without making a, more than a single error. So how far away are we? Well, currently, apparently the best quantum computer that we have is somewhere around a thousand qubits. And they're not very stable. So error checking is uh, one of the main problems that researchers are trying to fix. Now, this is the timeline, you might say, of where quantum computing is going. We're in the noisy stage right now, so we'll, pull, we'll say NISC is the best of our computers that are currently in anybody's laboratory. And the next phase we're going to call resilient, where we still don't have a lot of qubits, but they work enough so that we can use them with stability and good results. And then, of course, the phase after that is our supercomputer. So how far away is that? Well, it's going to be a kind of a gradual scale as we move from one to the other. So let's compare it to like the development of the airplane. So the Wright brothers were able to fly their flimsy biplane for maybe 100 feet or 200 feet, something like that, back in Kitty Hawk. And uh, it was obviously a great leap forward, but that was pretty much a noisy NISC computer. It was not practical for anything except for an experiment. And then some 20, 30 years later, we're flying uh, biplanes and DC-3s, and we have early uh, air transport. We're sending the mail, and the military is using them. And so they work pretty reliably, but uh, they're not great. And what we really wanted was, you know, a big uh, 787 that can take two or 300 passengers across the ocean reliably. They never crash, and people are comfortable, and we can predictably purchase tickets. And so 600 miles an hour is a normal way to travel these days. So a supercomputer is that uh, mature stage, you might say. So it took uh, airplanes maybe 50 years or so to reach, uh, you know, jet travel that was comfortable and that people liked it. So Microsoft and Google are updating their algorithms today because they believe that is coming sooner than later. Here's a story from uh, Network World that says Microsoft is working on error correction and uh, it's going to become a usable quantum computer. Uh, here's the question that says, is 99% accuracy enough? And apparently it is. So if you have something less than 99% accuracy in your bits, then error checking is just impractical. But we're crossing what they call a threshold. So based on what I told you, what would you say? Uh, why don't you tell me in the comments below that you think it might be uh, six months away or maybe six years away or this is just another one of those fantasies that we're going to have to wait for another generation. Whatever your thoughts are, <laughs> let me know and see if you have some other insights that I have forgotten. I invite you to come to class, of course, if you're interested in software development and computer science. Uh, we talk about this stuff every day. So we'll see you next one.